Good afternoon. I am Andrea Chisholm with the Midday News for this Monday, November 4. A special welcome if you're watching on OneSpotMedia.com. The language barrier between local and overseas doctors and nurses could be life-threatening. That's according to President of the Nurses Association of Jamaica, Carmen Johnson, who reiterated the concern. TVJ's Shamela Pullen has that story. Cuba, Burma and India are some of the countries doctors and nurses arrive from to work in Jamaica's healthcare system. But for President of the Nurses Association of Jamaica, Carmen Johnson, there is a language barrier which needs to be addressed. Ms. Johnson says she has been getting numerous complaints from her nurses about these doctors and nurses not understanding patients well enough to give a proper diagnosis. When I said my stomach hurts, the doctor may interpret it to be my real stomach, but I'm referring to my chest. And so the doctor is going to examine you for stomach or to treat you for stomach, rather than really and truly saying to you where exactly is your stomach. And so I go with a chest condition, but I'm treated for a stomach problem. Ms. Johnson says sometimes local nurses would help by interpreting for these doctors. But with a heavy workload, they're unable to do much. Ms. Johnson says it's cause for concern. That space between being well and remain unwell, that space between life and that space between death, because if I'm misdiagnosed and I'm treating you for something else, it means you're not going to be getting better. And it means I'm now impacting another system within the body. And so it is that space between I'm getting out of the hospital or I'm remaining there, I am getting better or I may die. She's suggesting that the government do more to retain and train locals who will understand the patients better. Nobody really listens because the panacea is the easy way out is to recruit than to retain for them. And though you say to them these are the strategies to remain, to keep your person, they feel that um, they go, it's more remittance coming in. And also, it is less complaints from those who are in the system about things. Because when you have the expatriate, you have them for a two-year contract, and you can't keep them or don't keep them. They go and they come. And so they see that as their easy way out of treating with the issues within the public sector. Shamela Pullen, TVJ News. There are more questions as to who should actually benefit from paternity leave if it is legalized in Jamaica. President of the Jamaica Employers Federation, David Wan, says based on forums conducted, there are concerns about how the leave will be granted. TVJ's O'Shane Masters reports. What will be the regulation guiding how paternity leave is granted? That's a major question which have arisen following the recent increase in dialogue on the issue. For one, some are questioning whether it should be done through DNA testing or via the name that is on the birth certificate. If you look at what's been done in some other quarters, uh, if I come to work and I say my, my baby mother you know, her is, is due in such a sort of time and I specifically want the time at birth and so forth, which is going to be the 15th of November, uh, it needs to be signed by her, yeah. suggesting that, yes, I am pregnant, and it needs to have yeah. that material mm -hmm. from the clinic to say she has been visiting the clinic and so forth. Because one of the things that paternity leave drives that it increases partnership. Justice Minister Delroy Chuck last month said what the country needs is paternal responsibility and not paternal leave. But social anthropologist Dr. Herbert Gale says figures show fathers are increasingly playing a role in their children's lives. So the earliest material we have documented is 18% of children birth to 80 years old, which is called early childhood, would have had a father presence. It's 42% today. We're well, putting us in, in, in the top of the world in terms of Big growth in father presence. Dr. Gale further underscored the need for the leave. Fathers who live in the States or elsewhere and send money home get an average of 9.2 out of 10 as a rating. And the father who stay next door or live down the road who's extra residential and does everything, he does PTA, he does clinic, he's <laughs> there at the time of the birth, he does everything. That's a fully nurturing father. His average score was 4.1. Now, in that context, that is the context, those are the figures, those are the data. 
that is the context in which we must understand how Jamaican men are performing and why it is that they need paternity leave so that they can help their families. For opposition Senator Lambert Brown, if paternity leave is to be granted, it must be legislated. If you leave it up to the contract where the employers are in behavior stronger than the worker, you're not going to get it in the large numbers that you need. Even if the government comes with a statutory regulation that says you must give two weeks of paternity leave minimum, the employers are going to want to look at, for their own companies, things like, are we going to implement a lifetime cap? Not saying you can't have the all children you want, but we can't pay for all, uh, give yes. paternity leave for all those. They were speaking in a special discussion on paternity leave on Jamaica News Network, JNN, on Sunday. O'Shane Masters, TVJ News. Meanwhile, President of Men of God Against Violence and Abuse, Reverend Jason Downer, says the comments from the Justice Minister has shot the government in the foot. Minister Chuck should have consulted um, and instead of allowing his emotion to lead him in that direction and just making those utterances, go to the Bureau of Gender Affairs, um, speak with the senior director, um, Mrs. Um, Sharon Coburn Robinson, mm -hmm. uh, go to the mail's desk headed by Mr. Nash and Miller. You'll get some information. You will know where your government is leading towards before going and making such utterances. If 24% of Jamaicans are married, mm -hmm. and 18%, of, uh, are in a common law uh, copper family and 30 odd percent are are everyday extra residential <laughs> you can see that the marriage group is is not the biggest group and therefore yeah. there has to be a plan for Jamaica and not for those who for the purpose of economics or tradition mm -hmm. or religiosity are married welcome back and we're continuing the news the teacher migration crisis affecting Jamaica may worsen in January. JTA President Owen Speed gave an update at its annual meeting in Portland. He argues that teachers are in search of better working conditions and an increase in wages. From January, another set of teachers will be leaving Jamaica. And from April, another set of teachers will be leaving Jamaica. And from June next year and July, another set of teachers will be leaving Jamaica. All of that is coming from that kind of experience that the teachers have in the Jamaican classroom where there's very little respect for one. And people who believe they know everything about education, putting their mouth into it. Mr. Speed also blasted those who think he is political because he speaks out on issues affecting teachers. They cannot see anything apart from orange or green. That is the big problem that we face in this country. And that is our um, and we are going to get over that um. More than 150 persons in Buckner Clarendon have signed contracts to become new customers of the National Water Commission, NWC. Minister with Responsibility for Water, Pernell Charles Jr., said residents have embraced the concept of paying for the water they use. This follows the installation of a new pump valued at $7 million in August this year. And this will serve the Buckner community rectory land, sections of Stuart and sections also of Breezy Castle. So thousands, potentially thousands of persons are going to be uh, fed by this line and this is something which is well needed. They have been experiencing challenges for a long, long, long time. The NWC and the Jamaica Social Investment Fund will monitor the sustainability of the project through training. This partnership is also going to be leading to the identification of some of the community members who will be trained and labeled as the utility wardens, water wardens, to help the community, to educate them on water efficiency, conservation, how to treat with bills, how to communicate with NWC. This is the new approach. This is the approach of getting things done in a sustainable way. 
As Jamaica continues to experience extreme weather patterns, including severe heat and intense rainfall, the government is to start a public education campaign on climate change. Local Government Minister Desmond McKenzie says the campaign will begin this month in Portland as Jamaica observes Local Government Month. On an extensive public education campaign to sensitize the country, the communities about the importance of self-preservation and their own participation in saving lives and property. It is not a government job alone. It is, it is something that all of us has to do. Because In the meantime, Mr. McKenzie says preparations are underway as Jamaica gears up to host the 7th Regional Forum on Disaster Risk Reduction in Montego Bay, St. James in 2020. It's the first time a conference like that will be held outside of the American Jamaica is, a, is privileged to be hosting that conference with over some 50 countries with over 1,700 delegates coming into Montego Bay. So it means that as a country, we, we are recognized for the efforts that we are making in disaster risk reduction. And in news overseas, the Federal Appeals Court in New York has ruled that U.S. President Donald Trump's tax returns can be turned over to state criminal investigators. The ruling by the Second U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals is expected to be further appealed. The decision upholds a lower court ruling rejecting Trump's lawsuit seeking to block his accountant from letting a grand jury see his tax records from 2011. Manhattan District Attorney Cyrus R. Vance Jr. sought the records in a broader probe that includes payments made to buy the silence of two women who they claim had affairs with the president before the 2016 general election. And in sports, former Jamaica Scorpions captain Nikita Miller says the decision to retire from all forms of regional cricket was a tough one, but he feels the time was right to make the move to coaching. The 37-year-old, who announced he was walking away from regional four-day cricket after his 100th game, had expressed a desire to continue playing the white ball format. Mr. Miller, who is assistant coach to Andre Coley with the Scorpions, says he made the decision to give up all formats after working with the team during the off-season. Well, in June, um, I was in the, my last last month of my, my, my playing contract. Um, I was here doing some work with, with Juna Bent. Juna Bent was the coach, you know, trying to prepare the, the, the players before Kohler came in. I was here doing some work with him. And as I go, you know, after the weeks pass and, you know, a month pass, you know, I started to get the knack of coaching and sharing and teaching with the, with, with the guys. And in that period, I decided that, listen, Instead of you know trying to hang on in, onto one version, I just I just you know give my entire self to, to to teaching, coaching, and in that period I think the decision was made that listen let's just give up everything and just focus on, on coaching. In the meantime, Miller, who has been critical of domestic players, says this opportunity will help to improve the sport locally. Definitely, um, that that's that's an area that I'm 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 really looking forward to, to impacting. I'm also doing some work with Wilmers, and hopefully I can you know from that early stage just you know reinforce to young players that they need to you know get in a place where you're not comfortable with a performance. Once you get once you get a performance in, then on to the next one. You don't settle. You keep moving. Get into the habit of of doing the right things from an early stage, so that when you move on to the next level, it's it's seamless. The team depart the island today for the regional Super 50 tournament in St. Kitts. And that's the midday news. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Join us at 7 for the primetime news package. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon.